Good Sunday evening, everybody, live and direct from downtown Memphis, Tennessee. I'm meteorologist Austin Onik. A decently quiet evening, but we also have a little bit more problems with, again, the possibility of snowfall out across the Mid-South, maybe, as we go into the course of the next several days as we approach the possibility of that. That'll be coming up around Christmas or so, but otherwise we're not really looking at too much of any major concerns out there for the time being. Main problem we're going to see overnight is going to be, again, the potential of fog. We'll talk more about that coming up here here uh, in just a little while. We're just starting off a little bit early to get a few technical problems out of the way for the time being. So if you are just joining us, thanks for sticking around for Periscope uh, and Twitter. We're going to be giving you again more details on the rest of the forecast coming up here uh, in just a little bit. We do see again the possibility of some more problems again throughout the rest of the week where travel is concerned and that's going to be a bit of things to worry about if you have any problems for outdoors. Again, that's going to be for tonight and into tomorrow evening. More on that coming up here in just a little bit. Welcoming everybody who's joining us on Periscope and Twitter for tonight. We'll be bringing in our Facebook folks here in just a little bit. Time is just past about 8.30 in the evening, and things are decently quiet. Paramed 1, thanks for joining us on Periscope for tonight. Thanks for dropping on by. And also for everybody else, again, for the evening hours, if you're on Periscope and Twitter, again, forecast information over there on the blue bar on that side of the screen and for everybody else keeping track of everything else we'll be again going through the rest of the information coming up here in just a little while for those of you who are just joining us we are now live on Facebook as well on my iPhone and Periscope and Twitter on the computer system here in the News Channel 3 Severe Weather Center we've got a decently quiet night across much of the Mid-South but we are going to be seeing again the potential for some more problems out there into this evening we'll show you more about that coming up plus a lot of you asking again about the possibility of snow in the forecast as we go closer and closer toward about Christmas. We'll talk more about that in just a little bit. Is it possible? Sure, given the right conditions. Is it going to be a guaranteed lock that we're going to have to use the snow shovels and again get the snow plows out? No, I don't think that's going to be happening, but there are a lot of things to consider in the near future. We'll talk about that coming up in just a little bit. Babel Mia, thank you very much for stopping by on Periscope for tonight. If you can't stick around for the whole forecast, again, here's what it looks like in a nutshell. If you're watching on Periscope, Periscope and Twitter, the blue bar at the bottom of your screen. That's where you're seeing the forecast information scrolling on by for right now. Fog can be a problem into tomorrow morning. Otherwise, fairly chilly. Not really seeing too much of anything the way of a breeze out there, but it will be, again, a bit of a problem for travel out there when you can't see that much. So a little bit of extra time and a lot more space between you and the vehicle in front of you would be a very good idea just to be on the safe side tomorrow. Otherwise, coming home, you're not really going to need too much outside of just a jacket, maybe a little more breezy and seeing again the temperatures back into the mid-60s or so. If you're just tuning in and joining us, drop your location and your weather report. If you have anything, put that thermometer outside the kitchen window to good use. We'd love to see more about what you're seeing out there, so drop by your pictures as well. If you're traveling tonight, again, still major problems going on in Atlanta with the catch-up being played for the power outages there, still trying to figure out what's going on. The good news here in the area around Memphis International, we've got a lot of fog out there. This is where you usually see the control tower out there. You can just barely see the airport grounds through the fog at 240 and airways, but no delays being reported. The green icon again showing delays, <clears throat> excuse me, of 15 minutes or less. So not much to report here. Now, likewise, we're not showing anything in the way of delays for Atlanta. We're not getting anything right now because of the fact that no flights in, no flights out. So technically, there's no delays going on. But the backups out there are at least two to three hours, according to different websites like FlightAware. And we are keeping track of more information coming in from the FAA. So if you are traveling, great website to go to, fly.faa.gov, just to be on the safe side to keep track of what's going on. Very very quiet campus of Ole Miss tonight in Oxford, Mississippi. Very foggy out there. Hardly anybody out and about. Not a creature was stirring. Not even a mouse, it appears. Not seeing a lot of foot traffic out there tonight on the Ole Miss campus. A little bit more foggy out there for this evening. Transmitter tower cam in and around I-40 in Witten. It was showing the area in and around portions of I-40 and in and around the area close 
to uh, Sycamore View, but as of right now, we're seeing little, if anything, out there. I'm going to zoom the camera out so we can take a look back toward Witten and I-40, and the fog has gotten very thick out there as we pan back around toward the I-40 and Witten interchange. Traffic fairly light for a Sunday night, so we're not seeing a lot of problems out there, but the fog has gotten very thick very quickly and will continue to stay that way into the evening hours. Here's what it looks like in downtown Memphis. Again, very foggy in downtown, looking at visibility a lot less than what it was just about a half an hour ago or so, so the fog continues to be a bit of a problem. Rain at this point, again, not looking at too much. Some light drizzle out there, and that's about all we have on Storm Tracker 3S radar. We do have this nice little stream of moisture coming up from the Gulf of Mexico. It's not much of anything except for just cloud cover and very low level amounts of fog and rainfall out there, but we do see, again, the potential of that fog sticking around into parts of the Mid-South as we go throughout the rest of the evening. Now the rainfall chances that's gone and our next storm system is still several days away so we'll talk more about that coming up here in just a little bit. Rest of the evening again we're going to be on a little late thanks to football so join us at about 10:38 this evening for the late edition of News Channel 3 at 10. Thanks to everybody for joining us again. If you're just tuning in on Facebook drop your location and your weather reports if you have them into the comments section we'd love to know what the weather's like and your location around so do some amateur meteorology some citizen science if you will will and let us know more about what you're seeing out there. Tomorrow morning, about the time that the News Channel 3's daybreak is on the air with Todd Demers, temperatures are not going to go too much farther downwards back in the mid-40s, and that should be it with, again, the winds coming up out of the south, keeping things fairly quiet. Gray colors on screen, that shows, again, just the cloud cover, and it's going to be pretty thick right on in through about News Channel 3 live at 9 tomorrow. By lunchtime, we start to see a little bit of breakup happening back to the west. Again, a little bit less cloud cover out there, but but it's going to take better part of the rest of the day. Kids getting out of school, going right on in through about the area of rush hour to get anything in the way of clearing skies out there for this evening. Uh, Ntesk Burr 4, thank you very much for joining us. Hope I'm saying that right on Periscope and Twitter uh, for tonight. Getting into the evening hours tomorrow, still not doing too bad. Outdoor activities, going to holiday parties, whatever you've got in mind. Again, cool, but not exactly on the chilly side. And then, past News Channel 3 at 10 on Monday, this is where we start to see even more rainfall redevelop for the area. And this time around, it's got enough instability. The atmosphere could be a little bit more turbulent, so we could see the possibility of some thunderstorms with this mix coming through on about Tuesday or so. Now, severe weather at this time, a little bit on the iffy side, but again, we'll be watching that with a lot of interest. This could be a big problem tomorrow morning. Visibilities in the Mid-South estimates for about rush hour tomorrow. Goose eggs across the board. We could be looking at some very thick fog. Would not be surprised to see the National Weather Service issue a dense fog advisory earlier tonight into tomorrow morning. If that happens, Todd will have more on that coming up on News Channel 3 Daybreak. So be prepared for some fog out there, which could be, again, some difficulty with driving and also some slowdowns out there. Allow for some extra time, less speed, more space between you and the vehicle in front of you. Let's be careful out there. Let's be just very cautious. Now, two things coming up. Second thing, we'll talk about snow and ice. First of all, I want to talk about the possibility of rainfall, getting into some more soggy conditions as we go to work or school on Tuesday, then watching the area down into around... Okay, you're going to be cranky about this. Sorry, the touch screen is getting a little bit over-eager to do stuff. Okay, well, fine. Hang on. Cranky computers... I have a problem with, so let me just do this the old-fashioned manual way. All right, there we go. Not doing it again, are you? I thought not. Yes, I'm talking to inanimate objects. I'm running out of coffee. That's the way it works on the weekend. Now, for the next couple of days, through Tuesday evening into about Wednesday morning, we see, again, the potential for some very heavy rainfall possible. Northern Mississippi and back into southeastern Arkansas, Depending on how much we get, again, with some of those thunderstorms, we might be looking at some flash flooding potential, but mostly it's going to be just heavy rainfall draining off into the reservoirs, creeks, and rivers of the Mid-South. So could be some problems with drainage as we go into around Wednesday and around four inches of rainfall in parts of the Mid-South. That's, again, in southeast Arkansas, northern parts of Mississippi. For Memphis and Shelby County, not really seeing a lot out there in the way of heavy rainfall from I-40 northward but there will be a decent soaking out there. It's going to be down this direction that we could see a little bit more 
now the touch screen starts working great. Now we're seeing again the potential for again rainfall amounts of a lot heavier conditions down here. So be prepared for that as we get into the next couple of days. Now here's what everybody's been asking about and here's where it gets kind of iffy over the next few days. First of all, colder air arrives. The first leading edge of that cold air starts again making its way toward the Mid-South as we get into this next weekend. It's not going to be an Arctic blast from what it looks like right now. It is possible. J. Crow Means from Periscope, thanks for joining us tonight and welcome to the show and everybody on uh, Facebook as well. Thanks a lot for checking on through. Uh, Anna Teen and a teal T6. Thank you very much for joining us and ciao to you as well. Again, what we're looking for is colder air to arrive first into the weekend. That'll be the main ingredient for any moisture that's left over here. Now, the potential for anything involving snowfall is mainly going to be back to about I-70. St. Louis, Kansas City, Topeka, Wichita, that looks to be about a pretty decent amount of snowfall there. Also up around the Great Lakes, also back into the Rockies. Again, right as we go into around Christmas Day, this is where we see again the potential for some more of that snowfall out there as that cold air arrives. Now the big question for us is we're going to be on the leading edge of that cold air, but notice again that cold air is just barely into the Mid-South, so it's going to possibly cool us down. But is it going to, first of all, give us enough cold air to change anything over from moisture, from liquid moisture to frozen or freezing precipitation? And is it going to be close enough to us anyway? And right now, according to these computer models, it doesn't really look like it. Now, this is for snow. This is for the potential of rain changing over, mixing with snow. Heaviest activity, again, around Wichita, back to about Columbia. That's going to be about the heaviest activity there. Now, the possibility of ice, as in freezing rain pellets, known as grapple, sleet, things like that. That potential starts to show up a little bit nicer on some of the models as we go into, again, around Christmas night. And that's where we start to see, again, that target zone going just north of Memphis into southeast Missouri, southern Illinois, just north of the News Channel 3 viewing area. Man, you are really cranky this evening. Sorry about that. I'm going to have to stop using the touch screen for a little while. This is what we're looking at. Hang on a second. I promise this will work. Just give me a second here for, a sec for just a moment. Okay, now... <clears throat> where was I? Right, weather. Okay, I knew that. Now, anyway, this is what we're going to be looking for. Again, this is just a possible scenario of outcomes where we could see some frozen precipitation, again, mainly north of us. It depends on how far south this cold air gets and how much moisture is left over. Here's what it looks like, as I said, as I advance the maps to the seven-day forecast. Temperatures again tomorrow, very mild for this time of the year, back in the lower 60s. Staying in the lower 60s, quite comfortable as we head into and around Tuesday or so, and into Wednesday or so. Dame Tam 1, thank you very much for joining us on Periscope for tonight. Showers and thunderstorms coming up Tuesday into Wednesday, and that could be, again, some heavy rainfall for parts of the Mid-South. We'll cool off a little bit, but not before we bounce back into the mid-60s. Colder air arrives going into Saturday and Sunday, and temperatures by Christmas Eve back into the mid-40s with, unfortunately, more chances of rainfall going to be sticking around the Mid-South there. Now, after this, that's where the colder air starts to make its way on through. We'll warm up a little bit. There could be just a bit of a burst with that warm air coming up from the Gulf as we head to around the big day itself, We're getting into around the lower 50s for Christmas Day. Afterwards, we start to see the cool down taking place. A lot of the computer models out there, again, the computer models go off in all different directions. Some are much on the warmer side, some walk the middle line, and some got a lot colder. Some of the computer models on the colder side of things are showing temperatures down into the upper 20s for highs. Tuesday and Wednesday. Some are showing upper 50s, so this right here is kind of what you might call the middle ground temperatures that I forecast for next week. So lower to mid 40s, light chances of rainfall, maybe, maybe the possibility of some rain mixed with snow, freezing rain, sleet, stuff like that. If we get anything, we're not going to be looking at anything in the way of snowman building contests, nor are we going to be seeing any major problems. That's the way it looks like right now, way back here toward about Sunday night. Things will be changing as we go throughout the next few days. For those of you who don't like that, if you, don't, if you like the certainty in your forecast, you want to look at the forecast 52 days out and have it be exactly the same, 
doesn't work that way. Meteorology is, again, variables and they keep changing. So the best thing for you to do at this time would be to keep attuned to the weather experts and we'll keep you advised on this changeable forecast over the next few days. The further we get to Christmas, the closer it gets, the more we will know and the easier we'll be able to give you a little bit more of an, ex an idea as to what's going to be going on with a lot more accuracy. This back here is a lot more accurate. This back over here, not quite as carved in stone as what we're seeing here. So these will be changing. The most important thing is to stay tuned, to keep tuned to News Channel 3, and we'll lead you through all this and keep you updated as to what's going on over the next several days. That's what we do. It's what we love to do. We'd love to get you updated on stuff like this. So again, stay tuned to News Channel 3 on air and online, and we'll keep you updated on all that stuff coming up in just a little bit. Barbecue off the chains. Welcome to the show on Periscope. Damon Tan, number one, Holla back at you. Thank you very much for stopping on by. Anna and Teal T6, thanks for joining us as well. And everybody else stopping by for this evening on Periscope as well as on uh, Twitter and Facebook for this evening. So thanks a lot for sticking around. Rest of the forecast again into tomorrow. Things will be changing a lot as we get into tomorrow morning uh, and through the rest of the week. So stick around for more with News Channel 3's Todd Demers. He'll have more in your forecast bright and early, as I will with Bob and Josh on Talkback Live. That'll be starting at 8 o'clock tomorrow morning and throughout the rest of the week as well. AM 730 in the Memphis metro area. But if you're watching on Periscope or Twitter from parts unknown around the rest of the world, likewise on Facebook. If you're from outside the viewing area and you can't catch the signal here, catch the signal here on TalkbackLiveNetwork.org. And Bob and Josh would love to have you along. Again, mainly sports chat, but a lot of current events, a lot of local leaders. Uh, I'll be on there occasionally with science and information and stuff like that. So a good opportunity to learn more to get your day started in the Mid-South area. Bob and Josh on AM730, Yahoo Sports Radio. And of course, my forecast on the rest of the weekend on Country 92.5 and Oldies 102.3 on the East Arkansas broadcast network stations. We've got a lot to talk about again in the next few days. We're going to be keeping you updated and we're going to be very busy here watching these storm systems arrive, drop that heavy rainfall first, and also the possibility again of maybe some frozen precipitation into the end of the week. But right now, again, a little bit on the iffy side on that. So we're going to have to watch that with a lot of interest out there. So keep it tuned to News Channel 3 again uh, for more information on that. Got any questions? Let me know. Email address austin.onic at wrag.com or you can reach me through wreg.com slash weather and on all of these social media networks as well. Love to have you along for the ride, so join up. Watch the forecast. Keep it tuned to News Channel 3 for the latest information, and we'll keep you advised on that. Again, late tonight for the news. It'll be starting at about 10.38, thanks to NFL football running a little bit over, but we'll be on with a lot more information. Kristen Holloway has the news. Mike Sadie has a busy day in sports coming up, and, of course, yours truly with your complete forecast. Thanks for joining us on Periscope, Twitter, and Facebook for tonight, and we'll have more details on your forecast on the late edition of News Channel 3 at 10, and Todd Demers has more on your forecast coming up bright and early on News Channel 3 Day. Right. Thanks for joining us tonight and stick around for more with News Channel 3 on air and online.